Alright man, peace. So many times in the past on this channel, for those of you who've been on my channel for long enough, you know that I've spoken on the concept of quote-unquote work relationships. This segment here will allow me to expound on that sentiment. Also pay very close attention to the background of Miss Jane Pauley in light of the soon-to-be so-called Valentine's Day. They have a Valentine's Day theme behind her. Notice how they juxtapose the heart with the sun. Right to the left of the screen there, you'll see that there's a heart with a sun image inside of it. Of course, also the red rose, as I've touched on, is the symbol of the goddess of lust and love, Aphrodite. You'll see that they have the right eye right above Miss Pauly, the so-called eye of Aset or eye of Hathor. And the heart as I've spoken on in the past, is just a symbol for Kush. Okay? Because the heart was viewed to be the, the center of or the sun of the universe. And the sun is symbolized as Kush, or as he was known as in ancient Kemet, he's also known as Ra, or Ra Atum. Okay? That's speaking about Kush. And unfortunately, because so many brothers are caught up in the Kemetic Babylonian philosophy, they study these various gods and they think that they're all separate entities. But the proof that they're all talking about the same individuals is that they oftentimes get amalgamated. So Ptah and Men became Ptah Men. Or Osiris uh, was oftentimes joined unto Yah or Kansu and, and Tahuti. They would all be joined together. Why? Because it's all the same entity. Sek met with, with, uh, with uh, Aset. Because it's the same person. It's talking about Semiramis, the wife and mother of Nimrod. Okay? But anyway, just to get back to the point, Miss Jane Pauley is going to introduce this segment on workplace relationships and the new, the new dynamic of relationships in America due to the fact that you have the genders being spliced together in the workplace. So let's see what they have to say. Of course, I'm going to chime in. Working it out on the job is a day-to-day -day reality for any couple involved in a workplace romance, particularly these days. Tony DeCopel has been talking to some of the couples who've been making it work. Now, in light of the quote-unquote hashtag MeToo movement, hashtag Time's Up movement, it's going to be very interesting to see the change in dynamics in the so-called workplace or corporate America. Why is that? Because many people are dating or engaging in sexual repartee or sexual relationships with people in the workplace. Why is that? Because for the most part, in modern day America, the workplace is where people build most of their interpersonal relationships. It's where they spend most of their time. It's where they do most of their talking. Um, that's why you have so many hangout partners that come from the workplace. You have people who meet their quote-unquote best friends or their wives or their husbands in the workplace. So now that you've added the, the hyper-scrutiny of the Me Too movement, um, which has created a programming dynamic for many liberal females in corporate America, it's given them another option on how to view a man who is making a pass at them or come on to them. It's going to be very interesting to see how men respond and react. So let's see what they have to say. In Hershey, Pennsylvania, the rush is on. Those are all Hershey's kisses. Close to a billion will be made just for this Valentine's Day. Valentine's Day comes from a Greco-Roman ritual known as the Lupercalia, which basically is in veneration of the god Apollo in his altar as the wolf god. Um, now, there was a wolf god in ancient Kemet known as Wep Wawet, spelled W-E-P as in Peter, W-A-W-E-T as in Thomas. That basically was one of the altars for Nimrod. As I always and I incessantly state on this channel, brothers, all the gods of the ancient world are just pseudonyms for many of the archetypal figures that those of you who read the scriptures know about many of the antediluvial or even post-diluvial entities like Cush, Nimrod, Noah, Adam, Eve, so on and so forth. 
Well, Wet 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 was one of the war god altars for Nimrod. And um, he became known in Greece as Zeus, right? Or uh, Zeus Lycos or Apollos Lycos. And in that altar, he was known as the wolf god. And as the wolf god, he demanded a sacrifice. When you study the Lupercali, the Lupercali normally fell around February 14th or February 15th. And they would have to go to a mountain. I believe it was called Wolf Mountain in Greece in a section known as Arcadia. And the entities that were venerated there were Apollos, Zeus, and Pan. As I've told you, brothers, Pan is just the Greek version of the entity known in, in Kemet as Pata. All right, he was known. He became known in Greece as Pata Pan, which is where you get that character from. Well, when they would go up onto that mountain to venerate Pan or Apollos, they would sacrifice a human being, and they would eat their body parts. That is where you get the symbol for the heart, the chocolate-covered heart. Anytime that a person was sacrificed, it was in remembrance of Nimrod or Asar when he was killed and his body was chopped up. So when you eat the chocolate covered heart, that is in remembrance of Nimrod because please understand Nimrod was a so-called Hamite. Right? He was a he was a person of Kemet. He was a so-called African. Now, the holiday later on became known as St. Valentine's Day in commemoration of a saint a patron figure in, I believe he lived during the uh, 4th or 5th century. Oh, no, no, 3rd century, I believe. His name was Valentinus. And he became attributed to that day because they were trying to offset the Lupercalia. The, the church at the time was trying to offset the Lupercalia. But after a while, the pagan aspect and the church aspect became intermingled. And that's why even to this day, what do you have symbolized for, the, for, for Valentine's Day? You have Cupid or Eros. Because Cupid was just another version of Heru. Okay? That's all Eros or Cupid are. They're just an altar version of Heru. And as I stated at the start of the video, the heart symbol is symbolic for Kush. Because the heart represents the, the center of the universe. And in the Kemet belief system, the sun was the center of the universe and the heart was the center of the body. All right, so that's where all those symbols come from, but it's just a big hustle. Um, once again, I, I see so much stress that gets put on so many of these dudes during the holiday season, running from so-called Thanksgiving all the way through and culminating in Valentine's Day. And it's just a hustle. It is, is to force men to spend a whole bunch of money on flowers and candy for some broad that they may not even be with next year. There's nothing wrong with buying things for your lady you know, you buy flowers and candy, but you're not supposed to do it in commemoration of a fake holiday. And all these holidays go back to the to the worship of Pan and 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 Nimrod, etc. Every last one of them. There'll be another one coming up that they call St. Patrick's Day, but it's actually the Liberalia or the Day of Wine. Okay? Which is which is in veneration of Bacchus once again. And I got into it with some some female who tried to comment in one of my videos, some Caucasian female who tried to tell me about the Bacchanalian rites. The Bacchanalian rites or Bacchus is just the Greek version of Asar. That's all Bacchus is. That's why he was torn apart as well. And once again, in the Bacchanalian rites, you have cannibalism. All right. Behind closed doors, the elite engage in cannibalism. That's what the term Baal, when you say that a, a person is a kind of Baal, that means that they're a priest of Baal. That's what that term means. Khan or Kahun, it just means priest. And Baal, priest of Baal. Like the Carthaginians, you know, like uh, brothers love talking about Hannibal. That name Hannibal, Hannibal Baal. Uh, he was a Carthaginian. He was a descendant of the Phoenicians, which is a conventional term for the, the Canaanites. OK, but that's a whole nother topic for another day, because a lot of times brothers like to state that Hannibal was a was an Israelite. Um, he may have been, but I doubt it. OK, but just getting back to the topic. Point of this all is that Valentine's Day comes from the Lupercalia, which is basically just the veneration of the wolf or the wolf god. 
They believe that when you engage in cannibalism and you ate this body part, which is what they did on Wolf Mountain in Arcadia or in Greece, um, that you could have you had the power of transformation. You could turn into a sar. You could turn into the wolf god, or as he was known in Kemet as Wep Wawet. Okay, so that's truly what it was about, and then it became known and if, uh, as being associated with love and and really lust in its correlation with Aphrodite, with the rose, so on and so forth, all right? With Heru as Eros or Cupid. But that's where it comes from, the Lupercalia. And once again, look it up. The Lupercalia became associated with Pan, who was the god of lust. That's truly all so-called St. Valentine's Day is about. Just a bunch of niggas buying cards and flowers trying to get laid. Stay. Okay. Go get them. And if you need an even bigger dose of something sweet, watch their hands. When did you develop your sign language? Oh, that one. That's pretty. That's, yeah. What is that? This means I love you, so. Well, when we walk into work together and he goes to go out the door, we just kind of both go like that to each other. Now you see how they very slickly and slyly snuck the monocornuto hand sign into this segment. Now these two, they may actually believe that that sign means I love you, but it's, it's also very possible that they know what that sign actually means, which is that, that they are initiates or acolytes of Pan. Each other. K and Rob. And it's also very likely that the people who promoted or, or who decided to, to do this segment know what the real origins of Valentine's Day are and purposefully had them sneak that hand sign in there. Rob Wagner met on their first day at work. We were sitting in orientation. In and, this building. And I'd look back every now and I thought, oh, there's a pretty girl back there. <laughs> and the rest is history. They fell in love on the factory floor. I was always goofing off, so she was He would make laughing. me laugh, yeah. What would he do? Oh, like his hair net, he'd pull it down over his face and he'd be like, and the candy would, and I'm like, keep up. Just funny stuff like that. Yeah, a, a jackass making an ass of himself at work. Probably mess around and get his hand caught in a chocolate maker. <laughs> get his damn hand chopped off over abroad. They've been co-workers now for 22 years. For 21 of those years, they've also been husband and wife. And they're not alone at Hershey's, where love and work mix about as well as milk and cocoa. Damn, Hershey's making a lot of love connections. The modern workplace is one of America's most reliable matchmakers. Damn, this white girl ready to risk it all for, <laughs> for some of that mandingo, huh? Where the hell does brother buy that shirt at? It brought together Michelle and Barack Obama. You mean Michael and Barack, allegedly. Bill and Melinda Gates. Uh, masters of population control and eugenics. It's careful, <laughs> easy, easy. And happily, I also met my wife at work in the makeup room at NBC. This looks good. As newlyweds, we're still building our future. Yeah, you lucky. You must have met her back in about 2015. Because if you if you try to hit on her this year, you would have been another one of them dudes in the hashtag Me Too movement out of work. Do you think it's still possible in this day and age to have a, a romance like yours at work? I do. If you believe in it, yes. I think that it's going to be even more probable that many of the quote-unquote romances that people have are going to be centered more in the workplace because modern-day people, they spend so much time at work. And many of these females are lonely. So what's going to happen now, brothers? Um, because this is... I, I really am galvanized to make this video because of what I see is going to come in the near future in the corporate America workplace, particularly for the so-called black men. You're going to have a lot of these women starting to hit on you. Because be due to the Me Too movement, this is going to inhibit a lot of men from start from making the first move. So many of these chicks are going to start making the first move towards you. So just be very, very aware of that. Don't always decide to give in to a female who is initiating any type of, of, of romantic overture towards you. And if they do try to flirt with you, especially electronically, always save the messages, always save the emails, save everything. Because when the female gets quote unquote bored with you, you never know what she's going to say. She might say that this guy tried to harass me. He's making it an uncomfortable workplace environment. 
and whatever you do, do not allow yourself to get emotionally attached to any female in the workplace. If you decide that you're going to engage in, in some type of an adventure with the broad, just look at it as that. It's just going to be a fun time and it'll probably be over as quickly as it started. Because most of these females, these liberal females in the workplace uh, are dealing with a series of mental issues. They don't know up from down and they're just looking for something to take their mind off of how much they hate their life. Due to feminism, they have been swept up in a lot of emotional fervor and their life pretty much now is a series of roller coaster rides and they want to see who they can get to ride with them so just be vigilant and very careful but love on the clock has soured recently in the climate today especially things are more gray than ever rosemary hafner is the chief human resources officer for career builder a matchmaker for employers and employees According to their latest survey, only about a third of people have dated a coworker or will admit to it. The That's bullshit. Probably about 75 to 80 percent of people have dealt with a coworker at some time uh, during their workplace experience. And when I say date, I mean fucked one. And these people, they take these surveys and they, well, we never actually went out. I only bang, <laughs> I only banged at home or in the office, so that doesn't count. I'll just say no. The vast majority of people are having some type of experience with a colleague in the workplace eventually, particularly if you're around people of the other gender for a long enough period of time, something is going to pop off or someone will at, at the very least try to approach you. I mean, unless you look like Jabba the Hutt. The lowest in 10 years. Each organization is going to decide what's best for them. Some say no dating. Some say identify yourself to HR and fill out a love contract. Yes, a love contract. Look at this shit. Brothers, didn't I tell you that eventually things were going to have to get contractual? Now, why are these companies doing this? They're not doing this because of men. They're doing this because of the women. This is how much the inclusion of liberal women has changed the culture of the workplace. Now you have to be concerned about things that you're really not supposed to be concerned about. And you wouldn't be if they had separated the genders and kept them that way how they're supposed to be. Now you're going to have a love contract and you're going to see this start to get proliferated in many different workplace environments as companies get more hip to the fact that they are going to have to insure themselves against any type of tomfoolery in the workplace. So if the corporate structures are starting these type of conventions like a love contract, that's even more reason for brothers to be aware of what potentially can happen. The same way that they want to have insurance, you should have insurance as well. You make sure that you try not to hit on any females. I don't care how fat her ass is. I don't care how big her titties are. I don't care how much she looks at you. You let her make the first move and you make sure that you get it electronically. And once you get it electronically, then you save it and you go ahead and you do what you feel like you're moved to do. But always consider that it can end at any moment. So do not get caught up in anything emotionally otherwise known as a consensual romance in the workplace agreement. Look at this shit. In response to the Me Too movement of people with stories of sexual harassment and- You see that, didn't I tell you that this Me Too movement was going to metastasize? Didn't I tell you that? And worse, companies are looking for new ways to protect their workers. It's very difficult to control the outcome when- it No, you're not looking for new ways to protect your workers. You're looking for new ways to protect yourself when it is two human beings coming together, whether it's in an office setting or outside. Your stock ticker symbol is LUV. Right. Love. Yes. Is in the air. Love is in the air. Love is our stock symbol. It is also our headquarters. We fly out of Love Field. Uh, I think you're just a sex addict. How many times have you joined the Mile High Club? Elizabeth Bryant is the vice president at Southwest Airlines University. The company prides itself on one emotion. If we have an environment where people care for each other and can be themselves coming to work every day, that naturally leads to friendships, relationships. Getting your freak on. I can see the look of her eyes. She, <laughs> she has gotten really high up in the sky, and not just from her airplanes, from busting a, bu a bunch of nuts. Probably in the pilot's cabin. Sometimes marriages. <laughs> so how's your day? 
That's good. Yeah. Brian's husband, Tori, also works at the airline, which makes them one of about 1,500 love couples. But there are rules about workplace relationships at Southwest Airlines, such as a ban on supervisors dating subordinates. At any point, did you find yourself thinking, maybe we need to rein in our culture to protect ourselves and our employees? If I doubt it for the simple fact that many of these corporations are trying to encourage a quote-unquote family atmosphere. And depending on the culture that they want to promote, if they're truly sincere about it, I mean, you can either go left or you can go right. You can decide that you want to stop all romantic um, adventures or endeavors in the workplace, or you can decide to go all in. Since we're going to push and promote a family atmosphere, we might as well try to encourage people to actually become family and just get married and have them come to work and you know, work through it that way. If there's misbehavior, then you manage the misbehavior. Uh, the culture that we have here is one that is it's authentic, it's transparent, it really is founded in taking care of one another. Yeah. It's worked for us for 45 years. To hear Southwest Airlines tell it, whenever love takes flight, so does business. So the culture that you think is best for the business also happens to create relationships. Absolutely. You can't get one without the other. Well, I think we've always believed that if we take care of our employees first, they will naturally take care of their customers. And if we take care of our customers, our customers will come back. So in other words, you give them fellatio to them customers. Just keep it real. <laughs> Allegedly. Okay, you're not 100 satisfied with the service. We do have eight emergency exits on board the aircraft. Customers might notice flight attendants Dean and Terry Hansen. It's very important for us to keep our work relationship professional. We never want to bring any of our problems to work. Not that we don't trust you, but the flight attendants are coming through the aircraft right now to not only show you their arm. Yeah, please don't do that. <laughs> what is he? I'm like, what's going on here? You gonna get mad at us? You know what, bitch? I'm just taking the plane down. Fuck it. Fuck everybody. You know, since you don't want to be with me no more. We all going out. Armpit areas, but also to double check and make sure your seatbelt is securely fastened. Is it difficult working with him? No. I mean, I'm his best audience. First of all, I don't know what he would do without the plane. Absolutely. Yes. Have I told you today how much I love working with you? Terry and Dean met in the air on a training flight 18 years ago. Here we are. Now they're a team on the ground too. The married couple just bought a home in Loveland, Colorado. All right. This is our career. We're not going anywhere for a yeah. long time. Here's the new home. Trust. Trust. <laughs> We're in love with this company. We're in love with each other. We love working together. All done. And that's smart, too, because most of them stewardesses, they, whew, they, they put on a lot of mileage, and I'm not just talking about in the air. Goodness sakes. This is a true Valentine's Day for us. Yeah, well, all I, all I know is she better make sure that them that them skies that they flying are friendly. Because my man look like he might just snap and just say the hell with it. Just bum rush the, the pilot's cabin and just make the <laughs> have it look like that Tom Hanks scene in Castaway. Back in Hershey, Rob and Kay are making sure all those kisses get out on time and saving a few for each other. Just not the chocolate kind. Buy me a bag of potato chips. <laughs> I would much rather have that, yes. No chocolate. No, no. <laughs> yeah, no chocolate. Other than the new black guy at work. <laughs> but anyway, that's going to be it on that. I uh, just wanted to make this video just as an update for brothers to understand how um, these new ideologies, these new conventions that they're, that they're promoting and that they're propagating the Me Too movement, you are going to feel the changes. Okay, so to be forewarned is to be forearmed. But yes, in regards to Valentine's Day, all that is is a, is a very, very tacit way to make people celebrate the Lupercalia, you know, which comes in the month of February. You know, the, the, the February, by the way, comes from the term feb, uh, Februum, if I remember correctly in Latin. It's, it's uh, Februum. It means the purging or the, um, the purification. And they believe that through, through the, uh, the digestion of another human being, that they can be purged, they can be purified, uh, made into gods. That's what the Lupercalia is all about.
the Wolf Brotherhood. They, the ancient Romans, they even had a priesthood known as the Luper, the Luperci, uh, Luperci or the Luperci, spelled L-U-P-E-R-C-I. You guys could look it up. It basically the Wolf Priests. They venerated the wolf in the ancient time because that was a pseudonym for Nimrod, or as he was known in Kemet as Wepwawet. All right, so just make sure that you look those things up. As I already stated, uh, around February 14th, February 15th, they would go onto a mountaintop known as Wolf Mountain. I'm trying to remember the name of it. I think it was Mount, Mount Lycaon. Uh, L-Y-C-A-I-O-N. But brothers, please look that up because I can't quite remember it. They would, go, they would go up on that mountain and they would sacrifice um, goats and, and a dog. And they would also sacrifice a human being. And they would mix the entrails or the, the meat of all three together. And it was stated that the person who was able to get the meat of the human being mixed in there was the one who would be able to turn into the wolf and take on the aspects of, of um, wet while wet. But really by that time... In Greece, it was Apollo. Okay? Because Apollo is the Greek version of Heru. Heru is just the, the vicar of Nimrod, or as he was known in Kemet as Asar. But that's where it all comes from. It's just the veneration of the wolf. And they turned it over into a love festival when they mixed in St. Valentine, uh, who was a so-called black man also. But once again, when you eat that chocolate-covered heart... That is that is basically in commemoration of Nimrod and him being him being uh, mutilated him being t chopped up. So when you ate his body part, you took on his virility. You took on his nature as a great warrior. And you see that throughout cultures. The reason why they engage in cannibalism, the thought was that you would take on the essence of that person. All right. But anyway, peace.